So this video is to help with the Momentum Lab, um, the conservation of momentum, which um, is not the lab from your lab manual, the conservation of momentum lab from your lab manual. It's the conservation of momentum worksheet that is in the conservation of momentum folder. So make sure you're doing the worksheet and that you're filling that out and not your lab manual sheet. So I just wanted to go through and kind of do an example of the calculations needed so that you're not missing um, any spots and so you just understand more thoroughly exactly uh, what you need to be calculating and showing to get credit for this lab. So I have pared down versions of the tables present. So we have glider A before the collision. We also have glider B before the collision. And you'll notice that all of the spots are either filled up filled in for you for glider B, or they're crossed out. So there are no calculations for glider B before collision, because if you remember from the video, glider B was actually at rest, meaning its velocity is zero. So we don't have to calculate the velocity for that, because the fact that it was at rest tells us what the velocity, the initial velocity of glider B was. However, for glider A, we do need to calculate the velocity for that glider because it was in motion. So <clears throat> the only space that is blank on this table is that V sub 1, the velocity in centimeters per second. So in order to solve for velocity, we're going to use the equation uh, distance over time. Okay, so when we sent that glider through the, that photo gate, that timer, it had a flag on it that was 10 centimeters long. So what the timer measured was the amount of time it took for that flag to go through that photo gate. So we have a total distance of 10 centimeters and the time it took for that 10 centimeters to go through the gate was 0 0.0719 seconds. So to figure out the velocity, we're just gonna plug in those numbers from the table. So we have 10 on top, my kids in the background, I apologize for the extra noise. 0 0.0719 seconds on the bottom. So if you plug that into your calculator, you should get the velocity of glider A before it collided with glider B, who was just sitting in the middle of the track motionless. So I get what are we looking at? Three sig figs? 139, and the units are centimeters per second. So you're going to want to show this calculation because there is a spot to show calculations because you get points just for showing the calculation, but also make sure that you are filling in the table. Now there are two trials, so I am working through the first trial for you, um, but you still need to fill in those blanks so I know that you at least watched the video um, and understood how to do the calculations. And then trial two, you'll be on your own uh, solving for that one. So this is all before. So the glider A was going 139 centimeters per second before it collided with glider B who was initially at rest. So this was an inelastic collision. So when they collided, they stuck together and they moved off together as one object. So after the collision, we have the mass of both gliders we have that distance again of that flag that um, traveled through that photo gate and the time it took. So we're going to calculate velocity again, but this time it's final velocity of both objects because now they're stuck together and they're one object going the same velocity in the same direction. So we're still solving it the same way we solved for velocity up here. Um, it's d over t. So that distance of 10 centimeters divided by the time it took. And in this case, it took a little longer. So 10 divided by 0.212. So now the final velocity I get, two, three, six, six, it's looking like it's 47.2 centimeters per second. And this makes sense because glider one, once it hit glider B, it's gonna slow down upon impact. It went from 139 down to 47.2 centimeters a second. So it's important to get these calculations correct because we're going to be using this V sub one of glider A, its initial velocity, 
and then this final velocity in the momentum data table next. So I'm going to erase this part here so I have more room to show my calculations. So momentum data table. Um, I didn't show the data table just in the interest of space because I wanted to show the calculations. I felt like that was going to be uh, more helpful. So you are given equations for the momentum before. Remember this letter P stands for momentum. So we're going to calcula calculate the momentum before glider A and B collided. And then we're also going to calculate the momentum after. Okay, so we essentially took that big long equation um, and separated it into two parts, the before part and the after part. So we're going to be using these top tables up here for glider A and B to calculate the before momentum. And then we'll use this after collision table for the momentum after. So let me start with the before. So I want the mass of glider 1, 0.195. And I'm going to multiply that by the velocity we calculated, this v sub 1. So it's important to get the velocity correct, because if you don't, you're going to get the rest of the problems incorrect as well. So just be very careful um, when you are doing these calculations. So that's glider A, glider 1. So we're going to this table for glider 2. And the mass of glider 2, if you're looking at that table, is 0.289. The velocity, v sub 2, it's 0 because that glider was at rest. Okay, so 0.289 times 0 is just equal to 0. So to calculate the before, we are just taking 0.195, the mass of glider 1, multiplied by 139, the velocity of glider 1. And we get... 366, six, six, sorry, 27.1, and the units on momentum are grams, in this case, grams times centimeter per second, because this mass here is in grams, and we're multiplying that by the velocity, and the velocity in this problem is centimeters per second, okay, so that's why the units. Um, so I'm going to erase this here and fill in the answer we have so that it's ready for our next calculation. This is centimeters per second. All right, so let's look at the momentum after. Because remember, momentum is supposed to be conserved, which means the momentum before the collision should equal the momentum after. Since this is an experiment, there's all obviously going to be some error, but these values should be very close to one another. So looking at the momentum after, after we're going to add the masses, M1 and M2, of both gliders. So the reason we're adding these masses is because the gliders are now attached to each other. They're now one object, so we can now add their masses. So these are the two masses from the table of glider A and glider B. We're then going to multiply that addition by the final velocity that we calculated, 47.2. Okay, so we get 0.195 plus 0.289 and multiply that by 47.2. So I'm getting 22.8. Same units because we're still talking about momentum. I'm just going to erase this equation, put my answer over for my after, and they're very close to each other. I mean, they're off by a little bit, 22 versus 27, um, but they're within the same range. And to figure out just how close they are to each other, we're going to calculate percent difference. Now, this is not a calculation we have done before in lab. It is not the same as percent error. So for the percent difference, let me make more room. I have a feeling this is going to be a long one. We're going to take on top, in the numerator, the before momentum, this 27.1, and we're going to subtract it from the after momentum, which is 22.8.
In the denominator, we're going to then add the two momentums together. So 27.1 plus 22.8, divide by 2, and then multiply by 100. Try and see what the percent difference is. So 27.1 minus 22.8, divide that by 27.1. 2.8. Having some calculator issues here. 4.31%. So the percent difference is not, not bad. Right, 4% difference, to me that's relatively close. So you're going to need to go through all of these steps for trial two, making sure that you're calculating the velocities um, and filling in the table, showing your work, uh, calculating the momentum, showing your work, and then putting that in the data table as well. And then last but not least, this percent difference. So I hope that helps. Um, clarify uh, what you need to be doing for the lab and let me know if you have any other questions.